Sister Jacqueline was an amazing person, obviously a woman of courage, a woman of deep faith. Jacqueline was a very charismatic person, but she could speak, and you, you can't imagine the reaction of the crowds. And people would follow her around to her speeches just to hear her. She was not afraid to go out beyond these walls and spread the word about this wonderful Webster College and what it had to offer and to bring in support for our programs, federal support that we had never had before. I really owe my first job in New York to Jacqueline. I came to New York uh, on a job hunting expedition and vacation combined. And I had a couple of uh, introductions to people and one person led to another person led to another person. And I, I went to meet this gentleman uh, in a little cubby hole of an office. And, and he was really not directly involved in television, very, very several steps removed. But I walked in and he looked at my resume and he said, oh, you went to Webster College? And I said, yes. And he said, you must know Sister Jacqueline. He said, I'm in love with her. She's wonderful because she had been appearing on David Susskind's Open End program, which was a late night talk show. And he had come to know her, you know, on the television set through that. But because he made the connection with Webster and Jacqueline, he, he was able, willing to go the extra step for me. So first of all, he told me how I could get an interview with David Susskind and he gave me the name of Susskind's producer, and he said, now you call her up, and you just tell her that Sister Jacqueline told you to call. And she will never ask, she won't call Sister Jacqueline and say, did you tell this person to call me? But she'll see you. So indeed, she did see me, uh, and they had no jobs at the time. So I was calling the gentleman back, and he said, wait, I have a producer on the phone, and he's looking for a receptionist. And I thought, oh, you know, I didn't go to, college and to graduate school to be a receptionist. But the man has been so nice that at least I, at least I can do is go for the interview. So I went for the interview and when I walked in, uh, they said, oh, well now that we see you, uh, we have another job that just opened up this morning. Our assistant has just given her notice. And that's how I got my first job in New York. My perception of Sister Jacqueline was of a very um, dynamic person and she did not hesitate to, to meet the students. I mean, we all really knew her. We were obviously a small um, college at that time in terms of numbers, and the majority of the students did live on campus. And so um, Sister Jacqueline, um, many of the other sisters were people that we had an opportunity to know not only in class but often after class because we were all in, in sort of the same community. Sister Jacqueline Grennan Wexler was a dynamo. She put a personal mark on me. I mean, you could eat uh, lunch with her and come away thinking, oh my gosh, there's so much more for me to do. As far as putting the mark on the university, she had a vision. I mean, she had a vision. Sister Jacqueline was a mentor to me, um, and she cared. My dad died um, during Christmas of my junior year in college. Who came to the funeral parlor? Sister Jacqueline. Who came to the mass for my dad? Sister Jacqueline. Who was the la what was the last face I saw as we were leaving the church to go bury my dad? Who put her face into the limousine to give me courage and to tell me that she was there with me and she would help me? And she did. I wasn't sure that I could come back to school in January, but I did. And um, she was the major force in making that happen. I think that Jacqueline was a very, very special individual. And I think Webster is what it is today because of her and her forward thinking and her vision.